Hello everyone, my name's Anitsu, and I'm back with another Digimon video. So today I'm going to be taking a look at uh, the competitive landscape of BT12 and the meta so far. So starting things off with just some general data, kind of culminating everything about uh, BT12. So uh, on uh, the chart here is kind of the meta breakdown. You could kind of correlate this as a tier list, uh, but... I uh, broke everything down according to uh, how many decks were played of that deck and its overall uh, representation in top 16s in major events. And as we can see here before the June update, this is what BT12 looked like and it was a Beelzemon dominated meta. So we do have uh, June limitations uh, that is going to be changing things, but all of those limitations were placed after a more competitive BT12 environment. On top of that, uh, like I stated before, Beelzemon was taking up about 43% of the meta, which is higher than most other metas when a single deck tends to dominate. Everything else had a really hard time, it seems like, uh, struggling to take wins, and if you weren't playing basically the top 5 or 6 decks, then you weren't really uh, being able to have a good shot at success competitively. Some decks were still playable, but they had significantly less success and significantly less play rate than uh, all of the other decks. And diversity-wise and the power-wise of the decks, this is the second worst meta in the game's history that was recorded since BT7. BT7, as we all know, was a blue hybrid dominated meta. If you want the exact number on which that uh, blue hybrids was dominating, it was at about 55%. So this isn't as bad, but it's still pretty bad. BT7 had only 11 playable decks, and this has only 13 playable decks. So uh, there's a lot of similarities uh, between this and BT7 in terms of what was actually viable and how few decks were actually able to win. So what might have caused this? So the easiest answer that we could point to is the fault of the advanced deck. I think that the advanced deck was an absolutely fantastic product. I'm not going to knock it as a product. It's not solely uh, the advanced deck's fault. There were other compounding factors, but uh, the biggest uh, reason was probably because of how accessible the advanced deck was to be able to give players a tier one deck right off the bat. I'm not saying that is an actual problem. It's great that the accessibility is there for the fact that uh, players can just pick up a competitive decks really quickly and really easily, especially when it's this easy because you just needed one to two pre-cons, a small handful of upgrades, and you were good to go. But uh, the fact that uh, Beelzemon was a popular Digimon also meant that he just drove a lot of attention towards him, so people were putting down decks that m they might have played otherwise to be able to play him, and uh, that drove his numbers through the roof in terms of the amount of people just playing him. Then, on top of that, mechanically, there really wasn't anything to actually stop Beelzemon and its overall game plan and gameplay on being able to uh, trash itself super quickly, and then utilize the fact that it trashed itself super quickly to do very powerful things while being able to gain tempo because of all of the uh, abilities that are triggering while you're trashing your cards. So your cards are having even higher levels of impact than most of the other cards in the game, and there was no actual counter to that, and even if there was a supposed counter, he kind of had built-in counters to those counters. But uh, there were also a whole bunch of other cheap and powerful decks uh, that players could pick up, so so again, it's not all on the fault of Beelzemon for his overall success, because Hunters, Crosshearts, Blue Flares, Bloom Lord, Machine Dramon, and more were just also highly accessible because of how cheap the decks were and how easy they were to pick up and even play at times. So just going over some of the data that we had and kind of showing you uh, its overall results, the first event that we had starting off this meta was the May Core TCG Regionals. So out of 480 people, 118 were playing Beelzemon, so naturally the most played deck would be the one that would take up the most slots, because that's just kind of how statistic works, on top of good players actually being on Beelzemon, and uh, with the good players also being on Beelzemon, not that good players weren't on any of the other decks, it's just most of them were on Beelzemon because he was the most unfair deck out of them all in this given meta. 
And Beelzemon's vice grip on the meta didn't let go from here, even in other territories. Other territories, uh, not everyone exactly was on Beelzemon, but it was still a large portion of the meta. So uh, the game trade Italian regionals uh, being the second big event still had some pretty polarizing uh, results that really helped to solidify and shape the meta to what it currently was. Even though Blue Flare did end up winning this event, it just shows that uh, the amount of uh, decks that are able to top is severely limited because of all of the other decks that are being played being that much uh, stronger than everything else. Going into uh, Tax Oceana Online Regional, this being the third event, uh, there was a few new decks that were lucky enough to be able to break it into top 16, but for the most part, it was just more of the same than what we have been seeing. Security Control was able to win this type of event, just because you can never really count out Security Control, especially being a Beelzemon player and having Beelzemon be the best deck in the format. If you can uh, slow them down long enough, then they they will just end up milling themselves and security control and yellow hybrids inversely was on a, that type of a game plan to try to slow them down as much as they possibly can and limit the amount of damage they can do. This was a little bit of a smaller event so when it, you have a smaller event, uh, it shows that more decks are able to get lucky enough to be able to top compared to uh, larger events. But uh, going on to the top cut uh, May online regional, there were a couple of more decks that were able to uh, top it and break into top 16, but again, it is still just more of the same, showing that uh, what we currently have that's topping really does have this stranglehold on the meta that's keeping various other decks from being able to top. Then around that same time period, we also had the PPG Momicon Regional, which was another fairly large event uh, for North America, having even less diversity in their top 16 than most of the other events that we had. So what about Ultimate Cups? So Ultimate Cups uh, are going to be following, for the most part, the same type of trend as what we just saw with BT12 Competitive. I do like to label Ultimate Cups as its own thing. So Regionals are the more competitive event and Ultimate Cups are more casual. Ultimate Cups are also uh, going to uh, follow some slightly different rules. This time around, it's still sticking with the monocolor build. But we still see that consolidation of about uh, four decks with Machine Dramon leading the pack, likely due to the fact that there actually is even less answers in this format for a deck like Machine Dramon and for a deck like Beelzemon than in the competitive format. So let's talk about Beelzemon. So Beelzemon, yes, there is a new uh, limitation on EX2 Imp, and that will slow the deck down a little bit, but the deck is still going to be playable, and the best replacement that you could use is just using more copies of uh, the BT2 Imp. But regardless, uh, the X line introduced in BT12 gives the deck just a lot of extra viability to be able to put itself where it currently was for the uh, BT12 environment all the way up until this limitation. So let's talk about Hunters. So Hunters was the second best deck in competitive BT12. Now that competitive BT12 is over and the next competitive environment is going to be EX4 and EX4 isn't going to change things a whole lot. That's just a letting uh, Hunters position itself to potentially be the best deck in EX4's format. So what makes the deck really good right now is the fact that, well, it's another Tamer-based deck, so it's really hard to interact uh, with their resources, and the fact that they're playing lots of Tamers will only mean that it's going to be generating them lots of resources, while you also have a card like Arrestor German Superior Mode that has one of the best uh, removal effects in the entire game while also breaking a lot of rule conventions with his end of turn ability to be able to make an attack suspended or not. Then on top of that the deck also has some cheap and easy setups just because it's a very low to the ground aggro style of deck and it's going to be uh, trying to utilize its parts and pieces to aggress onto the opponent, delete themselves, 
put themselves underneath the tamer to then allow the tamer to do what it needs to do to be able to allow you to digivolve as cheaply and efficiently as you can to be able to have some quick answers at what the opponent could potentially do off of virtually any kind of board state and any memory count that they're left with. Then it also has a menagerie of different effects, so you get a toolbox of what you want and what you need. The biggest weakness that you do have to acknowledge about the deck is the fact that your security is usually going to be really, really bad, but you don't necessarily care if you're just outpacing and out-tempoing the opponent anyway, and uh, the fact that the deck it still does need some time to be able to set itself up and managing its resources could be a little bit difficult, especially for newer players. So it's not like it's going to be uh, the best deck by a large margin, but it's still positioning itself to be the best deck because of all of these factors and where the state of the meta is going to be leaving us. So moving forward uh, to X4, what really changes? Well, I'm expecting very little to actually change going into EX4. So Beelzemon might not be as dominated because of the limitation, but it's still going to be a very powerful and very strong deck, and all of the other really powerful and really strong decks that were under it are going to be performing just as well, if not better, only uh, keeping that stranglehold that it had with BT12 continuing into EX4. Then on top of that, the only real big update to a competitive deck is going to be with Blue Flares. So Blue Flares does get some noticeable upgrades, so it might see some improved success because of that, but uh, nothing else about EX4 really is super standout. The Omnimon Alter S deck it might be a surprise rogue deck that could be able to break into the meta, but the other deck set that the set is trying to support it doesn't necessarily seem like it has the ability for them to really top, comparing them to a lot of the competitive BT12 decks. So more changes will probably be made in BT13 to really shake up the meta. So we do have a little bit of a sneak peek with the rule change on its impact to the meta. So uh, the UK did have a Games Expo Regionals, and as we can see here, Hunters is the number one represented deck in top 16, and Red Hybrids was able to take the W. So as far as just my quick uh, expectations out of EX4 and kind of doing like a little tier list prediction, I'm going to be predicting that uh, in tier 1 you're going to have Hunters followed by Black War Greymon X and Machine Dramon to make up tier 1. The only reason why I'm saying Black War Greymon X and Machine Dramon are going to be in tier 1 is because, again, the amount of things that actually can interact with both of those decks is very limited, and Hunters is one of the few decks that actually can interact and counteract uh, the levels of protection that both Black War Greymon and Machine Dramon are working with, but all of the other decks, unfortunately, really are not. Then you do have in tier 2, Red Hybrid, Beelzemon, War Greymon and uh, Cross Hearts, uh, more specifically uh, Cross 7 Superior, just because Cross 7 Superior has better consistency than Cross Merva, and Cross 7 Superior can kind of answer some of the other big stack based decks like Machine Germon and Black War Greymon X. But uh, that's kind of where I think Tier 2 is going to fall. And then moving on to Tier 3. I have uh, Cross Hearts, uh, Cross Merva, just because it's still a very aggressive deck. You're losing your ability to react and respond to the opponent, uh, like with Cross 7 Superior, and your deck isn't as consistent, but it's still a very good aggressive style of deck nonetheless. Then you also have All Force, uh, Blue Flares, Security Control, Bloom Lord, Yellow Hybrids, and as my rogue pick uh, for the big change in EX4, Omnimon Alter S as the rogue deck. So uh, the uh, meta is uh, looking to not necessarily be super diverse because I don't necessarily think many other decks are going to be able to top outside of this just because they haven't really done that before and I don't think that the changes that EX4 is going to bring is really going to be enough to change where the meta currently is now just because EX sets are usually supplemental products anyway. So in conclusion, I personally think this meta sucks. I don't find it fun, and I don't think Ultimate Cups makes it a better experience by any stretch of the mean, and I still hate the monocolor rules that they implemented for it personally. The numbers that we've collected over the years since at BT7 show that it is the second worst meta in terms of deck viability. 
And that's actually really important because the more decks are viable means the less stale the meta gets because there's more possible different matchups that you're able to see. So it just increases your overall enjoyment having more decks actually be playable and not less decks be playable. EX4, as I already mentioned before, will not help this at all and isn't going to be changing the meta at all. And the June updates are going to be changing a few things around a little bit just because of the impact it has on Beelzemon and Bloomlord. And I'm ready for BT13 to be coming in July to really shake things up and change the game for the better. So that's all I really have for this video. As always, feel free to tell me your thoughts down in the comments below. And down in the description below are a couple of different ways you could support me and the channel. So I do have a, a TCG Player affiliate link. So when you use that link to buy cards off of TCG Player, then some of that money will go to supporting me and the channel. I also do make and sell playmats over on Overcard Gamers on Facebook. So when you buy a playmat with my design, then some of that money will also go to help supporting me and the channel. And on top of all of that, I do have a Twitch account over on twitch.tv slash Zenitsu. So giving me a follow and a subscription also helps support me there. And I do play Digimon on top of various other games on that platform as well. So thank you everyone for watching. And as always, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more content. And I'll see you in the next video.